everybody, welcome back to the Blaze and Lemoyne Creative. I'm Brianna, and this week I had originally planned to show you helical knitting as well as uh, continental knitting and breaking down, switching from your right hand to your left hand if you are eager to try it. You know, if English is, if people like to do continental because they think it's faster. Um, I was taught English and then one day I just woke up knitting continental, so maybe it's the conspiracy theory, which don't even get me started. I have been down a rabbit hole lately. That's its own thing. There are some really good episodes by Shane Dawson. Uh, <laughs> I digress. Anyway, um, this video will be just about helical knitting. And what that is, um, is when you use two skeins of yarn, you can use it for single row striping because this is where you alternate colors every other row. Um, I also wanted to note that it's really, really, really good for doing the stripes, the single stripes, without a jog. It's a jogless striping um, technique. So there is also that. I also will mention that yes, I keep moving this skein of yarn that has the needles poking out of it. So don't be weirded out by that. I have, it's just that I, yeah, just bring that footage and um, I didn't want to freak anybody out. It is moving. I'm moving it. <laughs> it's not anything weird happening. It's just me. So you could also use it to uh, like alleviate pooling, color pooling, if you're using in particular hand dyed yarns that can vary from skein to skein um, or have sections that are like, you'll see it very, very often. You'll have a custom hand dyed yarn where they have this whole chunk over here that's magenta and then this might be speckled, you know, for whatever reason. I mean, and that can end up and be extremely attractive, but if it's, if there's no shaping and you know, nothing changes, you're going to have this one section of magenta or like, a like it'll slowly make its way around depending on how many stitches it is that you have. And it can just look a little bit weird. Um, and probably not the finished look that you're going for. So helical knitting is when you use two skeins and you alternate. So it kind of breaks up that pooling. Um, as well as like in the instance of, a, of another sweater that I'm knitting. So I have four skeins of the same color, the, you know, it's the same colorway by the same dye company. Well, I think it's just a girl, it's one person. Um, Three of them look very similar and then one of them is like more saturated in color. And so I'll use helical knitting in order to kind of blend them together and not have like a stripe of much darker and then a stripe of lighter and lighter sleeves. It'll just kind of disperse that one slightly different looking skein throughout the whole work or most of it at least, you know, it'll try to try to make that work attractively for the whole, whole project. Um, but that's really what helical knitting is great for. So I, like a lot of, a lot of um, dyers, a lot of any dyers will say, not all skeins are the same because you know, they are, it's a craft. It can vary from skein to skein or dye lot to dye lot. And usually if it's a small, like any dyer, it's one person, two, three people, not a big company. Um, there's a lot of, room for human air. creative freedom. Let's call it that. <laughs> so helical knitting can kind of clean that up for you, basically. But that is going to be this video. I am doing helical knitting in the heartwarming sweater. It's not really necessary. My grays are pretty similar. It's like there's, there's no, there's, it's just gray. I'm just practicing and getting footage for you guys and showing you how to do it with gray so that it's really obvious what's happening. Um, but anyway, let's get into it. I appreciate everyone for being here and uh, let's, let's get knitting. Okay, yep, the ball, everything over here is totally, totally gone. You're not going crazy. It's me. I'm being weird. Um, we're going to go over the techniques that I use when I'm adding another color just in case it's helpful for anybody but just two quick easy techniques and um, you can start anywhere so unless you're doing the little stripes where you might want to start at a side seam so that you don't see the beginning of that uh, if you're working just to 
mitigate your pooling or to like work in two different dye lots of the same color yarn. Um, you can literally just throw it in anywhere. So don't don't worry about where you start, just start. And these are the two techniques that I will use. Please enjoy. I will go over my top two methods for adding in a ball. So then you can use this when you are starting a helical knitting, which we're gonna go over. You can also use this if you're just at the end of a ball of yarn and you're gonna start your next one. You just get the end of your skein and then make sure, since we're not going to graft it in any way, make sure you've got a decent amount. I usually like to leave between 8 and 10 inches for uh, weaving in my end. And then you can literally just insert your needle as if to knit and then with your yarn in a loop, just put that loop. around your work and you would do it the way that you would your regular knit stitch so your yarn your working yarn the end attached to your ball or your skein or cake whatever it is you're working from should be on top so your tail is going to be on the bottom this so this is my tail and it loops up and over just like I would if I were putting a new stitch on with an existing skein and you can just pull that through and then continue working. Um, this particular method sometimes can leave you in a pickle if you happen to pull and you pull a little too much because you have a loose stitch here. You can sometimes reduce the length of tail so then you, can, you might end up with not enough to weave in. Um, I will go ahead and have my same length, my eight to 10 inches of yarn and I will do a slip knot making sure that pulling the tail my tail end will release that slip knot and that's just my own personal preference it just makes it easier for when you go to undo that slip knot when you're ready to weave in your end make sure you've got enough of an end there, there we go. and then once we've done that, so we make a slip knot where the tail being pulled will release it. Just put that on one of these stitch marker. And then I will literally just go a couple stitches down, a couple rows down, and just kind of grab onto a number of pieces of stitches here. And clip it into place and then when I pull on the working end of my yarn it's not gonna do anything to the size well it could actually make it longer but it's never gonna we're never gonna pull 10 inches of it out so this is just a, in my opinion a more secure way if you know that you have a tendency to pull um, which I know that I kind of do so this is pretty typical of me when I'm starting a new skein do is once you have um, added your second color you just knit around and you'll have dropped your first color so let's say that this is the color number one and we're gonna drop it and then we picked up our second color and we've worked around and now looking at the back we've worked all the way around this is the color that we first dropped and this is color two ball two that we brought all the way around new knitting. So they are three, there are three stitches here and all we're going to do is just put those three stitches on our right hand needle. We're not going to work them and we're going to pick up the yarn that we left, yarn ball one, that we left here when we added yarn ball two. And then we'll just work around in our stockinette like normal. And then when we get to three stitches before, we'll go ahead and we will 
let go of this ball and we'll pick up this strand with this ball after you slip these two stitches. So that's how that works and because we're always we're pretty much right by this marker. So I will do a few rows and I'll show you where our ends end up in a few rows because every time you switch balls, switch skeins, you're three stitches back. So it doesn't it that's why it's called helical because it works its way around. So Okay, we're getting back to a point where I can show you how to switch your skeins for your helical knitting again. We're just gonna knit up two. Keep an eye on that right there. Just three stitches before that. So this is the color I'm working with. I'm just gonna set it. So this is our last stitch with color, we'll call this color one, skein one. And we've got three stitches, one, two, three, these three stitches here. And then our other color, our other skein. So I'm just gonna slip these last three stitches. And then now, work as if nothing ever happened with skein number two. And that's all there is to it. You're slowly getting further and further away from this marker that I have in my work. Eventually this will be around on the other side. And we'll have a sweater. <laughs> Alright, getting back to another transition for the helical knitting. Alright, and there it is. So you've got the last three stitches. Go ahead and transfer those over to our right hand needle. This is the yarn that I was using. You can see it's now the fourth stitch on there. So I'm just going to put that up and out of the way. And then bring the skein that I will be using to a better spot. And you know you have the right skein if it's now looking like it was the last worked stitch. Just be careful to set down the color, the strand that you're working with, slip your three stitches, and then continue working with the skein that is your last, your new last worked stitch. And you'll be golden. Are you good walking around? Okay, you're so cute. Come up here and say hi. Come here. Just, oh, she's gonna spill the wine at least in Walmart. Don't spill the wine. And I'm gonna use Alexa as my, <laughs> my coaster. All right, that is it for this video. I appreciate everyone for stopping by. If you have any questions, leave them below and I will get to them. Um, I hope this is helpful and informative for everybody. And then uh, if you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe. And then give this video a like, it's helpful for me. So. I appreciate it and I will see you guys soon. Happy knitting!